Your giant is just there so that God can set you up to conquer. Because God wants to show you his goodness. God wants to show you his abundance. God wants to show you. So we need to have the spirit of revelation on us. See, Israel came out of Egypt, but God could never get Egypt out of them. We need revelation. We need revelation of where we're going. We need revelations of the giants. We need to see them different. That's what revelation does. Revelation makes you see everything different. We hear the voice of God. God changes our whole perspective. How many of you have ever gotten a prophetic word that just changed your perspective? It was like, oh, okay, well, that's, that's what's going on. That's what's happening. Okay, thank you, Lord. We need revelation. And then we need preparation. Let me read you this one little verse out of Exodus chapter 12. It says, and thus shall you eat this meal. Whole, he describes the whole meal, describes the putting the blood on the doorpost. And thus shall you eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. In other words, God was saying, get ready to go. Raise your expectation. You've been slaves for 435 years. Your mama was a slave. Your grandmama was a slave. Your great grandmama was a slave. Come on, as far back as you can think, all you can do is identify with slaves in your genealogy. But God's saying, put your sandals on your feet, put a staff in your hand, because tonight everything changes. Chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12. Tonight everything changes. That night, all those years ago, everything changed. Tonight, everything changes if we raise our expectation. And then God said this. Well, let me read this part because Apostle Tom, it was almost like Apostle Tom and I studied together this afternoon, which we didn't. No, that's all right. You just quoted like 20,000 scriptures that I was going to give him, but that's all right. They got it anyway. So in chapter 12, verse... 35, it says, now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses. This is from back in Exodus chapter 3. And they had, New King James says, asked of the Egyptians. What it actually says is they demanded of the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. Now watch this. There's two periods of history that Israel was enslaved. There was the Egyptian 435-year period of slavery, and there was the Babylonian 70-year period of slavery. After both of these periods of slavery, when they came out of captivity, they came out wealthier than when they went in. When they came out of Egypt, they came out with the wealth of Egypt, gold, silver, clothing. And it actually says they put them on their children. You know what that is? That's the generational blessing. That's the blessing that breaks the slave mentality. Come on, are we passing a slave mentality onto our kids? Are we passing a bondage mentality onto our generations? Come on, that's why they said put it on your children so it'll break the yoke of that slave mentality. God had no problem taking 435 years worth of stored up Egyptian wealth and giving it to the children of Israel. He had no trouble in Babylon taking 70 years of Babylonian wealth and heaping it upon them and putting it in their hands. Go read the book of Ezra. It says at, uh, at several different decrees, it said um, they took a free will offering and then uh, they, they gathered some gold and silver. And then by chapter seven of Ezra, they said, go into all the land and gather all the gold, all the silver that you can find and give it to those Jewish people so they can go build their temple. So when we, the principle in scripture is when you come out of captivity, you come out with more than you even lost. But watch this. When they came out of Egypt, all the wealth of Egypt on them. They came out of Egypt. God 
crosses them through the Red Sea. God destroys their enemies. Moses goes up on the mountain. And what did the people do with that wealth? They turned it into a golden calf. Shake my head. They missed the point. God had just spent doing 10 plagues to destroy the gods of Egypt. And what is the first thing they do with their wealth? Is they turn it into mammon. Mammon, by the way, is not money. Mammon was eventually what they called Baal in the New Testament. Baal in the Old Testament is mammon in the New Testament. Did you guys know that? Make that connection. He's the God of wealth. In the Old Testament, he's called Baal. In the New Testament, Jesus says you can't serve God and mammon. Okay? But when they came out of Babylonian captivity, you know what they did with their wealth? They rebuilt the temple. And it was twice the size as the first one. Twice the size. A double portion temple. And it was paid for with Babylonian money. How cool is that? The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. But the key is we've got to have just hands, right? But we can have money as long as money doesn't have us. What does this have to do with Passover? It has everything to do with Passover. How do we respond once we've crossed over? What do we do once God's turned everything around for us? God said to the children of Israel, hey, I'm going to take you to this amazing land, but don't you forget that it was me that gave you the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18. Okay? So that brings us to the last word that I gave you, which is the word proclamation. And why do I use this word proclamation? Because God told the Jewish people, the Hebrew people, from that point forward, they said, every single year, you are to celebrate Passover. Every single year, you're to tell this story again and again and again, so see, honey, I do tell stories all the time, over and over and over again. I do know that. I am a storyteller. I love to tell stories. And my husband says, yes, babe, we've heard that story a hundred times. But they told it every year, okay? One more, time. One more time. That's right. One more time. And you know what this has to do with Passover? Rome, uh, Revelations chapter 12 says, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb... That's Passover. And by the word of their testimony, tell your kids. Remind your neighbors what Jesus has done for you. Find somebody that doesn't know the good news and tell them, this is the good news. You're struggling with addiction. Here's some good news for you. You don't have to struggle anymore. Jesus can set you free. You can have a pivot point moment in Christ and cross over. You're struggling with sickness. You're struggling with infirmity. You're struggling. You know what? Jesus paid the price on the cross. He became sin for us who knew no sin. He became a curse for us when he was not cursed, when he was perfect. Come on. Jesus carried all of that. And that should be our proclamation. Just like they revisited Passover every year, we need to revisit constantly the testimonies of what God has done for us.